Hi all, Trevor here, Summit or Nothing, continuing to look back at my journey along the southwest coast path. This trail at 630 miles long is the longest walk in the UK and covers four counties split into seven sections. In this video we will be revisiting the North Devon stretch which at approximately 80 miles is over twice as long as that of the Exmoor stretch but equally as stunning. It reaches from Coombe Martin to Marsland Mouth on the North Cornwall border leading us over rugged cliffs sandy beaches and tranquil estuaries with walks ranging from easy to severe I was enjoying myself nice it's, it's getting hard work and taking approximately seven days if you would like to watch the back catalogue of my southwest coast path journey or to keep up to date with my ongoing progress then please subscribe to summit or nothing on YouTube and hit that bell to be notified of each upload as I'm completing this path in my own time and order, for the most part I happen to walk this section in reverse. So for this video we'll start at Marsland Mouth and head north towards Cream Martin. The start of this section falls midway amidst a gruelling severe 15 mile stretch between Bude in Cornwall and Heartland. There is a wooden border sign off of Marsland's mouth which signifies the Cornish border. Bye Cornwall! Entering Devon there are plenty of valleys and coombs inland and some rugged cliffs ahead of us. Soon enough I climb down towards Welcome Mouth where the spiny rock formations reach across the sandy beaches beneath me. Beyond Welcome, it's a climb up onto the high cliffs and can see how this coast has caused so many shipwrecks in the past. The views opened up as I approached Speaks Mills, with St Catherine's Tor rising above the landscape. I took in the impressive Speaks Mill waterfall, which I was fortunate enough to see as a twin fall after a particularly wet season. Leaving Speaks Mill, the jagged jutting rocks and cliffs span out ahead towards Heartland Quay. Now there's a vast landscape of jagged rocks. And I pass the desolate ruined tower standing alone on the grassy warren. There's plenty of ups and downs before finally reaching Heartland Point. and it's somewhat of a relief when the Heartland Lighthouse finally comes into view. From here I head towards Clovelly along a moderate to strenuous section passing through Brownsham Woods. The highlights of this stretch are the scenic Mouth Mill, the interesting geology of Black Church Rock and the ornately carved shelter the Angel's Wing Folly. Soon after I arrived at Clovelly itself, a picturesque little fishing village, famous for its idyllic yet steep cobbled street. And beautiful little harbour. The next stretch, 11 miles to Westwood Ho, is another strenuous section. The first half of this stretch is deep within woodland and only offers rare glimpses of the sea and the village of Clovelly cascading down the cliffs. I passed through Bucks Mills. And Peppercombe. And from there on the views finally open up. It's more like it. Look, Lundy. Might do a walk around that one day. The next three or four miles are particularly gruelling. And at the time that I visited, 
The footpaths and steps was considerably overgrown too. A bit treacherous this bit. However, eventually the walking does become easier as I skirt the low-level cliffs into the seaside town of Westwood Ho. Westwood Ho is the only place in the UK with an exclamation mark in its name and was also where a young Rudyard Kipling was raised. An easy stretch now for many miles as I navigate the estuary and the river Torridge from the beaches of Westwood Ho via another quaint old village, Appledore. and into the town of Biddeford, where I passed the old Biddeford Bridge and joined the Tarka Trail cycle path into Instow. However, you can always catch a ferry from Appledore over to Instow if you wish to carve some miles off your walk. I continued to follow the Tarka Trail alongside the River Tor now to Barnstable via Fremington and then back up the opposite side of the river where I headed towards Braunton. There's a lot of bird life along the sandbanks and estuary to keep an eye out for. At Braunton, the path navigates the marshlands to the south of the town. And as we head towards Saunton, our inland path runs parallel to Braunton Burrows. Soon we arrive at Saunton, where you can find the Saunton Sands Hotel, which has been visible in the distance since Heartland Point. Leaving the estuary, the coast path once again leads back up some really beautiful coastal walking past the fantastic beach of Croyd. And out to Baggy Point. where we head past Mort Bay and into Woolacombe for some more popular surf spots. Leaving Woolacombe, I soon reached the rocky outcrop of Mort Point. where the harsh and jagged geology is quite unique. And the views of the cliffs spanning ahead towards Bull Point are some of the best views the coast path has to offer. I even chanced upon a seal swimming in the ocean beneath me. Then, after passing Bull Point Lighthouse, and the picturesque village of Lee Bay. The path then leads us up onto what feels like moorland, before dropping us back down into Ilfracombe. Ilfracombe has a quaint little harbour, which is also home to Verity, a huge sculpture by Damien Hurst. The climb out of Ilfracombe is an endurance, but the views of the town behind us are worth the climb, as are the views of Watermouth Bay a little further on. Passing Watermouth and its castle, we soon arrive at Coombe Martin Bay, thus completing the North Devon section of the coast from Marsland Mouth to Coombe Martin.